So one of the, the big things I'm always asked, what's it like fitting the professionals versus the amateurs? Strong like a tree, there's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Hope they won't shoot me down soon. Generally, the biggest difference is, number one, the amount of conditioning a professional athlete has got. You know, like they've had hours in the saddle. They're probably doing quite a bit of strength and conditioning and mobility work. If they're really well trained, they're gonna have done like a lot of uh, specific, you know, what I call like aero drills, strength drills to enable them to get a more aggressive position and what I mean by that is they've got like this ability to kind of like rotate the pelvis a lot easier and then that what that means is they can like generally they can take like a bit more of an aggressive position or they can stretch it out for the average age group what's going to happen is if you go you know like you get on this new time trial bike or even like an aero road bike and you go too extreme with it you're going to restrict yourself quite a lot around like the hip and that's just going to mean that you you know like you can't tr translate the power then it's like it's like for most people like over time it, it's probably going to take like if you want to get like this super aggressive position then it's probably going to take like three years to be, you know like to fully get there for a lot of people The other thing that a lot of amateurs, you know, like initially they're going to struggle with, especially if you've got like desk, desk job is like, when it comes to like the time trial bike is being able to like rotate the head into place. You know, we've got like two moves that, you know, I'm always talking about. We've got like, one is what we call like the turtle move. And that's generally when you're trying to drop like your chin down, you're trying to send your chin to your hands. So we're trying to get like into that position. And what I generally find if you've been at, sitting at a desk like all day, you haven't got like that rotation, you probably can't drop your, your head into place. The other one is being able to like shrug like your shoulders into place as well like if you look to you know some of the professionals i've worked with for cyclists you know i've seen like shoulder width is around you know we've seen as low as like 30 centimeters even for like males for females down you know i've seen like something like 26 centimeters i'd say the average shoulder width like when we did like the work with like victor campanets you know he his shoulders like 33 centimeters and he's able to sustain that for uh the hour record uh, and that's really critical you know like to be able to cut like through the the air uh, you, you're just trying to close like this gap when we look at like a lot of amateurs like you know like for males like I'm seeing shoulders out of, like 48 centimeters and then for females you know they can be down at like 42 but generally for, for males and and both females we want to try and get that shoulder width down to like 36 centimeters and a lot of the time is the fact that you know you can you've got to train that and that's going to take quite a long time really And obviously, it's just like then, you know, the biggest advantage that the professional has got, because they've had all this, you know, you know, time on the bike, they've been able to like rotate the pelvis, they can generate like the power a bit more efficiently, and they can also pull through the full phase of like a pedal stroke. But for a lot of amateur cyclists, that's what they're going to struggle with. They just, you know, like you can't go like too aggressive with them straight away. And you'll generally find what's going to work for a lot of amateurs initially is trying to keep the stack quite higher, but then it, we're going to need probably like to get a higher angle in terms of, uh, you know, like this pole positioning, because then they'll be able to kind of like drop the head into place where the professional, they'll be able to kind of drop the head and shrug into it. The, the amateur is going to need, you know, like more of like this, you know, higher position. And what I would say is it's kind of working for uh, both amateurs and pros now. Like years ago, there was kind of one way of getting aero, and that was generally that you would slam the bars and, uh, you know, like you, you kind of have like this super aggressive position. You'd be quite restrictive around like the hip, but it was the only way to kind of get aero. 
but now what we generally find is for most people that actually being a bit higher on the front end and being able to close the gap between like your head and your hands i'd say that that it can work for like both really but yeah i'd say that they're the you know like the main areas that you know the differences between uh, pros and amateurs